Michelle Berger. I am from BuffMother.com. Uh, today I am preparing to do a speech uh, to a group of ladies and men who have signed up for a medically advised weight loss program. It's called uh, Project Fabulous and it's with a local doctor here in town named Dr. Tammy. So uh, I'm practicing but also wanting to share some of the information with you. So I'm going to do my best to go over the information I'm going to present tonight at the class. And uh, in class I'm going to make it a little more interactive. I'm going to involve people. I'm also going to do some uh, little activities in between each segment. So you're going to miss out on that part. But uh, for overall you're going to get some of the great information. So first off, uh, I'd like to just talk about myself, of course, <laughs> a little bit. My name is Michelle Berger, and I started a website called BuffMother.com uh, about nine years ago after I had had four kids, uh, twins, and a C-section. Um, and then I transformed my body back to actually better than it had ever been. So uh, I was so excited that I wanted to share the information with other people and help other women uh, know what I knew, that you can transform your body uh, after you have kids and you can definitely, uh, you know, take control over your health and your fitness and uh, not only your body but your life and your legacy also. So a lot of what I uh, teach uh, is contained within a book that I wrote uh, a couple years ago. It's called Hormonal Timing. Uh, the basic of the book is about my secret system that I use to train women using their natural hormonal cycle. So along with that though, there's uh, not just the components that talk about that in the book. There's about half and half of the book is about just the mental side of things and then the other side is about the application of my hormonal timing system. So the great thing about uh, it the book is if you just utilize one of the principles, I call them foundations, and then uh, each foundation has a success tool in it. If you just utilize those items, um, even just one, and integrate it into your life and the mentality that you take towards your health and fitness goals, um, it could transform you uh, all, mind, body, and spirit. Uh, the difference uh, in my life since integrating a lot of these uh, tools has been huge and that's where I attribute my success. Uh, it's not you know, always hitting the gym, it's not always doing everything perfect in the kitchen. It's keeping the right mindset about it. So um, today, instead of talking so much about exercise and why exercise is good for you, I'm gonna talk more about how to train your mind to realize that you do need to do exercise that you do need to eat healthier, that you do uh, need to do these things and give you, help you learn reasons why, have solutions to any of the excuses that you come up with, and also keeping positive and happy about it along the way. Um, life is about living, not being miserable and not being focused on the natives and the drama that uh, come up in our life. So, first of all, I will touch on the subject of why um, exercise and fitness is important to you. We just give you some basics about it. Now, I, I know since the time we were children, we've had health classes and we've had media and we've had parents and we've had um, all kinds of influences that have told us that we do need to exercise, that we need to be active, that we were made to be active and that our bodies work best if we do exercise. So. Why aren't you exercising is the question. Um, I sent out, I gave you a uh, questionnaire and some of the questions on there are partly to do with this. Like, what is the number one reason why you're not as fit as you really want to be? Um, where's the disconnect between what you want and you taking action towards getting it? Uh, so, uh, some of that is just knowledge, you know, knowing that uh, diseases, you know, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, uh, mental diseases, all sorts of things can be prevented and reversed through exercise. Uh, and not just exercise, also healthy nutrition that supports that exercise. Um, studies have shown 
time and time again how just starting exercise program lowers your blood pressure. It uh, is better medicine than taking an antidepressant for your brain. It is uh, one of the things, the biggest leading advice that doctors give to their clients, you know, get out and exercise. You need to exercise, yet time and time again we aren't doing it as a society and we put maybe too much pressure on ourselves to uh, you know, do everything perfect so that keeps us from doing it. Uh, but um, some of the beliefs that we have about what exercise accomplishes uh, is uh, skewed a little bit. So some of the benefits of exercise that you don't hear much about are the hormonal benefits. Um, a lot of what I teach in my program, in my book, and also in uh, just in general to all my clients is about the benefits of strength training in reversing the aging process. Um, it's been known as the fountain of youth, it's been called that, because what happens as you strength train, as you challenge your muscles to do a bigger, harder workload than they just do in average life, you stimulate some of the greatest youth hormones that you have uh, available in your body. Uh, two of those uh, I'm going to just touch on are testosterone and growth hormone. Growth hormone is what you have in your body that when you're a child and you're growing and you're going through puberty that allows you to grow. Once you stop growing, what happens to you? What happens to growth hormone? Well, growth hormone, uh, you know, really goes down a lot. Um, you know, in the in your twenties, you don't really have that all that much, and that's part of why you know, as you age, you don't feel like as you exercise, you see the results you used to because you don't have the growth hormone you used to have. Whereas, if you go after stimulating that with some strength training you can actually create a youthful hormonal balance in your body. It's similar to what you had in your early 20s. So that, along with testosterone, and along with just you know helping eliminate extra estrogens out of your body, uh, hormones really, really, really are impacted by exercise. And also, every single cell in your body works better as you exercise. So if your pancreas is working better, your adrenal glands are working better, your thyroid glands are working, cells are working better, everything is going to get better if you exercise. So on the hormone side of things. Uh, as I mentioned just a minute ago, exercise is vital for elimination of toxins in your body. You have a circulatory system that pumps blood throughout your veins and through, you know, from your heart. Your heart pumps to provide blood to your, all your cells of your body. Without your heart working, you die because you, the cells in the blood are what contain your nutrients for every single cell. And it's also uh, vital to realize that there's another system called the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system doesn't have a heart to pump. It is you, it uses your muscles, your muscles on your body to squeeze the toxins out. So as you exercise, your muscles are contracting and they're actually stimulating that lymphatic system to work to squeeze toxins out of your body. That's why, you know, moving and stretching and and even inhaling big, you know, contracting your muscles a little bit makes you feel better. It makes you relax a little bit because your body is squishing some of those yucky toxins out of its system and getting rid of them. Uh, it pumps it toward, you know, it pushes it towards the heart, so from your extremities towards your heart. That's why, you know, exfoliation works. That's why a technique called brushing works. That's part of why massage works is because what they're doing is pushing the toxins out of your cells, allowing those cells to function without having a bunch of garbage piled up inside of them. So definitely exercise is needed to help stimulate your lymphatic system and eliminate toxins. One of the greatest exercises you can do that's very simple is just jumping or bouncing you know, that's why uh, rebounders are very popular with the elderly. Get on a little mini trampoline. It's easy for your joints. Just get on there and bounce because just that motion in itself helps stimulate all of those lymphatic, uh, you know, the lymphatic pathway within your body to eliminate those toxins. So exercise is vital for elimination of toxins. And like I mentioned before, on the cellular level, every little itty bitty cell in your body 
has energy systems, it has garbage cans, it has nutrients, it has, it's like the powerhouses of your body. Every single cell is vital to your health. So if you're doing things uh, that help eliminate toxins, that help stimulate proper hormones, that help uh, nutrient transportation, that help your heart pump more efficiently, you're going to have more healthy cells. Healthier cells mean more energy, it means more uh, longer life, youth, looking youthful, uh, eliminating toxins help prevent aging, uh, it helps reduce uh, stress levels in your body because everything is working smoothly like a well-oiled engine versus you know running into each other and crashing like an engine that doesn't have any oil, it jerks and hurts and hurts itself, it causes damage to other organs, all that kind of thing. Exercise is vital for every single, single function that a cell does. And one of the most interesting facts about exercise is that as you get in shape, you actually burn less calories than you did when you weren't in shape. Part of that is because your body becomes a much more efficient machine and it learns how to run and to do the same work that you expected of it when you weren't in shape much easier, much less energy use, much, you know, you actually have more of the little mitochondria in your cells. These are the powerhouses that produce energy in your body. So as you get in shape, you get more of these and you get more energy and that's why you know, planting the energy seeds that it takes to actually get in shape is so worth it because eventually your body runs smoother and more efficiently and you'll have more energy for um, everyday activities and that's why you putting the energy in in a workout is well worth the time and effort and pain that that causes to your life in the long run because you'll have more energy to do the things that you do enjoy, that you really want to do, the activities, you know, being able to, you know, get out of bed and even just clean your house. You have to have energy for that. So, um, definitely, you know, those are just some of the basics, fitness basics, okay, energy basics, exercise basics, the basic information that you need to know to make yourself want to exercise, right? Knowledge is power. Always remember that. If you want more motivation to work out, read an article about working out. You know, get some magazines that show different types of exercises, success stories of people that work out. Knowledge about exercise, knowledge about how your body works will fuel excitement. It will fuel passion towards working out. And, you know, maybe it's not something that's naturally in you, but, you know, we can... Every person has a body. Every person's body needs to move. So it's really important to your health and to your your happiness overall if you will learn to you know use that body that God gave you. All right. So now let's get into some more of the mental side of things. I titled this um, topic or this this speech tonight about is, is start by training your brain. So we want to train our brains to uh, realize that this is not all about weight loss. This is not all about just making one right choice, doing one workout. It's about momentum. It's about you know, getting one little goal made, one little choice on top of another choice on top of another choice. Now, Momentum is something that uh, is vital to your success. Uh, I call it buff mojo. You remember Austin Power movies? Who stole my mojo? You know, like that guy, he, he got it. He knew that he needed mojo to be successful, to be the guy he wanted to be. So let's talk a little bit about mojo or momentum for a moment. Momentum is one of those things where it's not ever static. It's never just, you know, sitting here, you know, in the middle, just perfect, optimal spot always. No, it's either building or it's decreasing. So say for instance, uh, you think about a train on a, on, a, on a slight gradual slope. Okay, so we have a, a train engine and maybe, you know, a couple cars and a little caboose, nice little, you know, little engine that could try to go up the hill. Now momentum, positive momentum, is like the fuel, the coal that you put in the engine of this of this train. It helps, you know, every little piece of coal will help that engine run up that hill. Now say that 
um, every single negative choice that you make, every single non, you know, non act, non positive thing that you do or don't do, is um, added to the negative side. So that's like a big rock being thrown into the box car, another rock, you know, another rock thrown in there. So. One, you know, one pulls the train down the hill, and the other helps raise the the, the trail, the train up towards success. Success is the top of the hill, you know. So what we want to do is we want to get that train up to the success part, and then once we get there, it's a, just a free fall down. You know, it, it 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 really builds, and the engine is going stronger and stronger and stronger. But it takes effort. It takes making those hard choices. That's why it's more like. It's not, you know, you're being pulled in our natural human beings. We are pulled towards the negative. We're pulled towards the things that are easy, that are comfortable, that aren't hard, that cause us to just kind of stay the same. Just kind of keep. We're pulled in that direction. So it's, that's why we're on a hill where you need the energy. You need to put that, that fuel in. You need to, you know, put the fuel in the engine and, you know, build that up and take every little one of those pieces of fuel and get that engine to get up that hill because it's hard. It's hard to have positive momentum. But once you once you get it, once you get up to the top of the hill, there's a nice downhill. And it's a little easier and you can keep going without uh, having so much effort put in. So initially, momentum is hard to get. Once you get it though, the goal is to not pull yourself back down that hill towards the negative momentum. We want to keep that momentum building and building and building so we can get to that top of the hill and just have mojo and then we're just flowing in it and we're just feeling good all the time. That is the one thing is that you can never be always perfect. You, you cannot be perfect all the time. You know, just stop trying to be 100% perfect all the time. It does not work. We have to realize that what we can be perfect at is stopping negative momentum from building. So you see yourself, you know, making like for instance at Thanksgiving, you see yourself making a couple of bad choices. Like you choose to have a piece of pie, and then you know you get offered another piece of pie, <laughs> you know, because you had the apple pie, but now you need to have the pumpkin pie, and then next you need to have the cream cheese pie. So it's like a slowly building negative momentum streak that, you know, whereas if you just had maybe the one piece of pie, it wouldn't throw you completely into a negative spiral. But if you have more and more and more and make more and more choices that are bad, pretty soon you're just like, oh, forget it. It's not even worth trying. Let me just do whatever I want to do. And then, you know, three or four days go by and you've eaten horrible and you've gained back five pounds of the five that you just lost. So now what happens? So the goal uh, that I have for you is to teach you to become an expert at breaking that negative momentum cycle. So let's talk about some ways that we can break the negative momentum. So today, during in between segments, we're going to do some items I call Buff Mojo. So uh, some of those things are, are just fun, you know, like I have a list here. Um, drink a glass of water, eat a vegetable, exercise for two minutes. Do a mental exercise like writing down positive affirmations or five things that you're you're really really thankful for. Um, encouraging someone else, uh, taking five deep breaths, cleaning something you know even if it's just for a couple minutes. Um, eating a piece of fruit, taking your vitamins, you know stuff like that. You know it's every single little positive choice. Um, you know avoiding even avoiding the temptation to do something negative is a positive. So that's moving you towards a positive. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and just talk about uh, you know, some of the things that you run into on a day-to-day -day basis is that you know, every little decision counts and every little decision adds up. So first thing you wake up in the morning, you have the decision to drink a glass of water or not drink a glass of water. Uh, you know, one of the best things you can do when you wake up is to rehydrate yourself because you've spent eight hours sleeping and dehydrating that entire time by losing water through your, your skin and your breathing. And uh, so, one of the best things to do is drink water. So you have a choice. Are you going to drink that water or not? Start off the day with a positive choice. Drink the water. Next, you have a decision to make. Are you going to work out or not? You have plenty of time, you know, trust me on this, you have plenty of time to work out before you have to go to work, but you, you 
and I'll say, ah, I'm just going to sit down and, you know, look at Facebook for a while instead of doing my workout and drink this coffee. Okay, so, you know, maybe not quite a horrible choice, but, you know, maybe not a positive because, you know, you need to get that workout done and you know that you're not going to do it at 5 o'clock at night when you're tired after being at work all day long. Next choice comes up, oh, what to eat for breakfast. Oh, shoot, I ran out of time. I'm on the road. Oh, goodness, get to work. There's a big plate of donuts right there. Oh, man, I need to eat something. As they say, the breakfast is the most important meal of the day. If I don't eat something, my brain's not going to work. I'm not going to be able to think at all. If I don't eat that donut, I don't eat that donut. You know, it's that bad choice right there. You know, your momentum starts going backwards even more. And then lunchtime comes out. Your friend goes, you're starving by now. And you have a sugar crash after eating that donut. Your friend's like, hey, let's go to the Mexican restaurant. And you're like, oh, all right, chips and salsa. And you have chips and salsa. You don't stop there. You don't start making some good choices with your food selection. Instead, you have the super greasy chimichanga, no meat in it, just all cheese and just, you know, loaded down with no eat like 1,000 calories just at lunch. Get back to work, work for a couple more hours, you know, get home. What do you do next? You know, by then you're like, ah, screw it, I'm gonna order pizza, I'm too tired. You know, and then another day goes by where you're not even thinking about anything but immediate pleasure. You're not thinking anything about about breaking that negative momentum. You're not thinking, what can I do to just stop this cycle right now? That's what you need to think. You make a bad choice. Think, okay, what can I do to stop this cycle right now? Five minute mojo. Get up. Drink a glass of water. Stretch for a minute. Stand in place and run. You know, we're going to do these items. So, five minute mojo. You, you have control over every decision that you make. The big picture is made up of every little choice. Every little choice is who you become in the future. So let that person become the one that you want, not the one that just is easy, that the one that doesn't take any effort to produce, the one that is just all about pleasure, 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 me, me, me. I'm just wanting to make myself happy, even though that doesn't make you happy. Because what is going to make you happy? Being healthy, being active, being goal-oriented, accomplishing things, being an important person in the world, being an important person in the lives of your children, that's what's going to make you happy. Whereas eating that piece of pizza, eating that donut, is that really going to make you happy? You know, I don't know. Or skipping your workouts, is that really going to make you happy when you look in the mirror? What's going to make you happy when you look in the mirror is when you start seeing the, the fruits of your labor, the fruits of you des deciding to make those little choices. So let's just work, focus on keeping your momentum in the positive swing. Okay, we're going to try to always make more positive choices as our day goes on than we do negative. And guess what? That train is going to get up that hill and you're going to get some momentum and you're going to get some mojo. And you're going to see weight loss happen and then pretty soon you're going to be unstoppable because everybody's like, hey, you look great, you're doing great, you know. You got it, in, and if you can just keep that momentum, and you know, it's like a precious little egg. You got to protect it and take care of it and sit on it, and then eventually it's going to turn into a bird and it's going to fly away, and you're going to have awesome momentum built up. So, positive momentum is the goal, okay? Now, on the side, of talking about being positive, we hear this all the time. Self-help gurus are notorious for saying positive mental attitude. Just have a positive mental attitude. Turn that frown upside down. So you do for one second and then you're back to thinking about the negative thing in your life. The key with keeping a positive mental attitude is this. You have to change your focus completely. Okay, You need to just, like, like stopping negative momentum, you have to stop that negative outlook. Taking, you know, anything that is giving you a negative outlook, if you add more energy to it by thinking about it and by talking about it with your friends and writing about it on Facebook and, um, you know, calling your mother and telling her all about what happened and then, you know, just giving tons of energy to that negative item that's causing, wreaking havoc on your life, that's causing drama, causing problems, that's only going to get bigger. It's only going to grow. Your focus is in the wrong place. Your focus needs to be on the solutions to that problem. So if you want to put any energy towards 
making yourself have positive mental attitude, you need to focus on the solutions to the negative problems in your life. So for instance, let's say that you lost your job, okay? It's a horrible, horrible day, you lost your job. You know, instead of calling up your mom and you're calling up your sister and right on Facebook, my boss is a jerk, he fired me today. Focus on the solution to that problem. Okay, you lost your job, but what are the solutions to that problem? What are the positives that come out of this problem? So take a piece of paper, write it down, mull over it, then go ahead and press into those. Call up your mom and say, guess what? I lost my job, but I'm so fired up. This gives me the opportunity to do what I always wanted to do. I'm going to go after this other job. I, you know, I am so excited. I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to take some online courses. Uh, you know, I'm going to use this as a time to just, you know, reflect on myself. I don't have to go to work. I can take this two week, you know, take this time to really, you know, hone in on what my true goals are. I'm going to have some time to take care of myself. Uh, you know, yeah, maybe I won't have any money. <laughs> Oh, by the way, can you borrow me $10,000 to make it through till I get a new job? Um, you know, so definitely, you know, use situations to, so let's talk about a positive mental attitude and how we can focus on solutions. So what I did on your uh, questionnaire, uh, we had uh, several, several questions that I asked you. What do you fear most about your health status? So this is uh, one of the things that we're going to focus on uh, your solutions. What prevents you from working out as much as you should? Uh, what is the main problem that prevents you from eating a healthier diet? Okay, so let's take uh, Susie. We're going to take your questionnaire and we're going to help you brainstorm on why you don't work out as much as you should. So. We're going to put down the reason you said that you have an injury, a knee injury, um, and it, it prevents you from working out. Okay, so I want you all to chime in on what you think we can do. What are the solutions to your problem and that will help you have positive mental attitude, get you through this? Okay, you have a knee injury, but you know what? Your knee is just part of your body. It's not your whole body. Your whole body's not broken. So you can do other exercises like upper body exercises. You can do um, some, uh, if anything that doesn't hurt your knee, you could even uh, do some running in place while you're sitting, sitting run drill to get some cardio in. You can do at work, definitely. You can focus on, on your diet, right? Okay, and you can research some um, cures for knee pain, knee cures. Um, visit your doctor, uh, get some personal uh, physical therapy to fix the knee issue. Maybe, maybe even invest some money into yourself and get some surgery. Um, if, if that's something that, that is needed, okay? There's all kinds of things that you can do. You can take um, your supplements for your knee pain. And, uh, any, and some of like what you know, you know with your knee injury is that strengthening, re-strengthening, icing it, all those things are vital for it to get healthy again. And so you need to press into those and do what you know and not just use it as an excuse to not do anything. You can't just have a knee injury and say, I have a knee injury, I have a bad knee, so I can't work out. That is um, a very poor excuse because we have all kinds of great solutions for that. So that will help you keep positive through the pain, help you, you know, make some progress. Maybe it's not exactly what you want, but in time, a knee injury should heal. It's not like if you hurt your knee, you're not ruined forever. Your body is amazing. It will heal. It, it can, you know, you can fix things with um, surgeries. Uh, you need to realize that it's very important and that it's vital to your health to have a strong, healthy knee and do everything that you can in your power to get that done. This is your, your own health advocate, right? Okay, so that's a... a, a focus on solutions for a knee injury. 
let's say let's say what's another uh, problem he, we're here have here with Tom. Tom, his problem is shopping for food. He he has a problem that he always uh, he hates shopping for food. Um, he doesn't have time to shop for food. He doesn't have a car to get there. He doesn't have a way to even get to the grocery store, I guess. Um, shopping for food, yes, it's a pain. I don't like it either, but uh, there's many, many helpful uh, solutions that we can come up with. So, uh, have you heard of online shopping? Yes, you can online shop. So you don't have to actually go to the store. Uh, you can have things delivered to you. Now, not every single item that you're going to want to eat is something that you can shop for, but you can definitely get a lot of good items. Um, you can change your mindset about shopping for food. Um, you could hire somebody to go shop for you. You can um, just go to some websites where they offer food lists, right? Food lists lists, grocery shopping lists. They help you, they assist you, they help you get that motivation to go to the store and you know buy enough food for four or five days and you don't have to do it again. You don't have to go every day. It's way easier than running to through the through the drive through all the time. But if you do go through the drive through, make healthy choices at the drive through, right? Okay. Alright, so who has a problem that you want us to brainstorm for? Uh, that you just really feel like you can't do it yourself, that you need some input from us, some creative thinking ideas. Okay, so we're going to do that. Focus on solutions. That's the way to keep your positive momentum. Uh, focusing on solutions, talking about solutions, talking about the positive side of things gives energy to the positive. We don't want any energy towards the negative. We don't want any negative momentum. We want all of it going towards the positive. That will help us have positive mental attitude. That will help us keep in the right mindset about what we're trying to do. Now, the third item that I want to talk about tonight is about why. Why are you doing this? Okay? Um, Freud said that everyone is motivated to action by two things. Sexual gratification. Sounds like him and importance, being important in life. Brian Post says that everyone is motivated to action out of either love or fear. Anthony Robbins, he says everyone is motivated to action because of avoidance of pain or the pursuit of pleasure. So no matter what way you look at it, whether it's love or fear, pain or pleasure, for you know trying to get laid or trying to be important, you have motivating factors within you, okay? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna give you one right now. Your why cannot be visible or measurable, okay? I am not gonna allow you to have visual, visible or measurable goal. You can have those goals, but that cannot be your true number one reason why you're going to stick to this program. Because once it gets hard, once those decisions get hard, and you're in pain, and you have to have some determination. You know, you'll be like, yeah, you know, I want to be a size 2, but I'm not being a size 10. Being a size 20 is just fine with me. I'm comfortable. I can, I can still get in and out of my bedroom, you know. So <laughs> it's one of those things to where when the going gets tough, those visual, measurable results or reasons just kind of fall off the wayside. And then you kind of forget your focus. You don't really, you know, you're not as motivated by it. The things that truly will get you deep down inside is a why that impacts those that you love and the things that you fear, okay? So, your legacy. What on earth do you want to leave behind? Do you want your children to look at you and, you know, to talk about the tombstone test? But beyond that, we're looking at a legacy. What are you leaving behind for those that love you? What are you leaving behind for those that care for you? Those that um, will have to care for you as you get older. So think about this. Okay, I have an uncle who, at the age of 44, had a heart attack. 
Prior to this, he'd been a smoker, he'd been a drinker, he never exercised in his life, he uh, eats whatever he wants, he was obese, he actually found out that he was pre-diabetic at that point. Heart attack. Nothing. Does nothing to take care of himself. Ever since then, he's been pretty much laid up at home, in his mobile home, doing nothing. You know, not going anywhere, just basically waiting to die. The quality of life, ugh, must be horrible. He's got emphysema now. 20, 15, 20 years later, he's like, my mom's asking for prayer for him because he's in the hospital with kidney failure and his legs might need to be amputated and his lungs don't work anymore and his heart is, you know, another heart attack and he's got pneumonia or whatever it might be full-blown diabetes and he's got to be on insulin all the time. Why didn't he do something? Was he being just completely selfish to not take care of himself? Doesn't he love anybody? Doesn't he truly care? Or maybe he just doesn't think he does. Maybe he doesn't think people really love him. Well, the key thing here is that you are loved and people love you and people look at you. And you need to realize that your legacy, what you leave behind for them, what you, how you impact their lives, starts now. It starts with the choices you make now. You need to decide what your why is. Why are you really doing this? Are you doing this just because you want to wear a size 2 to the, uh, you know, or just because you want to, you know, uh, to lose 50 pounds? No, you want to get healthy. You want to show others that are around you that you care about yourself and that you're willing to take care of yourself so that you be a good example to them. And also that you want to leave a legacy of health and happiness and they want, you want people to look at you like you are awesome, not be like, oh my gosh, what a loser. She never took care of herself. She never did anything for anybody else. She had no confidence. She didn't step out and use the talent she had because she was 50 pounds overweight and she had no energy to actually do it. You don't want that legacy, do you? You think about it. Okay, so let's talk about some ways that you can build a that, that you can come up with a really strong why. Okay, I want your why to revolve around those you love, your children, your grandchildren. Are you going to be around for them? Are you doing things that prevent you from getting diseases that will prematurely end your life? Are you making choices in the kitchen? Are you doing things you need to do even though you might not want to do them? Are you operating out of love? Are you operating out of the fear? Are you taking action in the positive direction? Are you keeping it positive? Are you building some positive momentum for the future? Are you rising higher every day? Are you going backwards? You know, if you're not going forwards, you're going backwards. So just think about this. You know, think about the legacies that you're leaving behind. Think about the true reason why you're doing this. All right, now in the in the you know little lighter side of things, I want to talk about measuring your success. Um, this is one of the biggest things that I have issues with with um, the mainstream diet media, the Biggest Loser TV show. Uh, they put so much emphasis on the scale. People put their their emphasis on the scale. They don't. Uh, they don't take into account all the other successful, the successes that they have. So, um, if I can find my sheet here. numbers. I'm going to read you this list and I want you to think about these and I want you to you know, process them and, and really be honest with yourself. Are you making way more progress than that scale is telling you, than your clothes are even telling you? So 
Plus, you know, if you feel like you aren't getting there fast enough, let's really examine and be truthful with ourselves about the progress we're making or the progress we're not making. If you're not really making any of this progress, you need to you know, take a step back and say, okay, what, what am I not doing to, to get those results? What, how am I sabotaging myself? Do you feel a sense of accomplishment? Are you increasing your weights at the gym? Are you getting in better shape? Are you overall in a better mood? How do you look? Do you look different? Do you feel different? Are you harder? Are you softer? Are you firmer? Are you jigglier? Are your rings looser? What about your face? Do your muscles feel firmer? Do you feel more coordinated? Do you have better balance? Are you more flexible? Can you touch your toes now? Do you have more confidence? When you walk in the room, do you feel like you are confident in your body? You're in control of your body. You have good posture. Are you gaining in your uh, self-worth? Are you being a good example to your kids, your family, your friends? Are you inspiring others to make changes themselves? You have followers, people watching you, and they're doing some stuff along with you. They're excited for you. They're excited for themselves because they see you. There's so much more to this than the scale, like I said. And if you start looking at um, your actions, take it down to one, act, one choice at a time, believing that every activity, every choice, every set, every rep you do, uh, in the weight room or every minute you spend walking or doing some running, some jogging, every vegetable you eat, every glass of water you even drink affects every single cell in your body. And are you moving towards a healthier body? Do you have your momentum moving towards a healthier body? Or are you losing ground and getting sicker and sicker and sicker, aging and losing hope? We need to have you focus on solutions so you can increase your hope, so you have hope that you can attain your goals. If you don't focus on the solutions, you focus on the negative, the energy to the negative, you lose hope. You think, ah, you know, the problem's too big. No, take that and, and decide that you are going to do something. You're going to take positive steps. You're going to um, go forward. All right. So... The next step in all of this is to take action. I need you to take action. I need you to do something. I need you to you know, go online, join teambuffmother.com if you're a woman. Join in there, introduce yourself, say, you know what, I want to be part of this. Start journaling, start asking questions. Uh, there's all kinds of people that truly want to help you. You know, honestly, the craziest thing to me is I'm available. I'm available by email, I'm available on Facebook, I'm available. Um, by the phone to certain clients and very few people ever ask me for help. <laughs> I'm like, I'm here to help you. Let me help you. What do you need? Do you have a question? Let me help you. You know, and so much of the time I get nothing because people are afraid to take action. They fear that more than they want the change. Do you fear the change, you know, be honest with yourself. Are you fearing the change? So don't be afraid of being who God made you to be. Don't be afraid of being improving yourself. You know, don't be afraid. It's not going to hurt you to, you know, in five years from now, every little choice you make that's positive is only going to make you better. You know, whereas if every little choice you make is negative, it's only going to make you worse. So what's, your, what's the choice? You know, what's the, the difference? You know, look at things that are going to bring life, a more ex enjoyable life to you versus in the long run versus that immediate gratification. And keep the why that you have in your mind a very paramount uh, thing. So anyway, thank you for listening. Thank you for letting me practice. I still have some work to do. I have um, always can get better. And I believe that practice makes perfect. So don't be afraid to try things and do things when you're not the best at them. Heck, look at so many of my videos. Most of them aren't the best, but I practice. I get better. I've gotten better year after year. And um, same thing with working out and uh, diets. It takes time. It takes practice.